Hello Blender community and anybody else who found this video. Rich Colburn here. I recently released the modeling cloth add-on and I got a lot of interest, a lot of good feedback and uh, thank you also to the people who supported that. The support really helps me to spend more time on developing cool stuff and fixing bugs. So in the spirit of creating cool stuff for people, there's a couple of add-ons that I created for 279 that I've just updated for Blender 2.8. So I'm going to show you how those work, and you should be able to download those from the link in the description. Once you've downloaded your zip folder, then you can just go to your preferences and go to install add-on from file, which is up here, and navigate to wherever you save that zip folder. It's called wrapping tools master.zip. And then we install it, and then you get the little thing here. You got to check to enable it and you can save your preferences so that it will pop up next time. So now under the end panel you get these new tools. You get this extended tools tab right here. And then I've already got this modeling cloth thing installed in my extended tools, but um, I get these new tools, surface follow and UV tools. So those are the tools we're going to talk about. So in order to do that I'm going to open a file I created a little bit ago armed and dangerous dot blend and I've got this arm here and what I want to do since you know like if you wanted to add a watch or um, like a bracelet or maybe some tape or I don't know something that would wrap around this arm or you could use it for really any shape of an object that you want to like have something some complicated surface and you want some other object to move along the surface of it or to to be deformed along the surface. This tool is basically, it's really good for that. It's good for a lot of other stuff too, I'm sure you can think of, but the thing that people seem to use it the most for is this kind of thing. So I'm just gonna show real quick how to do it. All right, so I don't wanna destroy my original object, so I'm gonna make a duplicate. And to du duplicate the area, I want to bend something around. I'm just gonna select it, duplicate it, separate it, and then I'm going to hide my original arm. So now I have this duplicate, and I want to go in and decide where do I want this thing to unwrap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, a two-dimensional version of this and flatten it out. So to do that, I want to put the seam along the bottom. I think that'd be like where it's least noticeable. So I'm going to rip that, and now I want to create a UV shape, which is this tool that I created, and I just say create UV shape. And once I do that, what it actually does is it creates this shape key down here. Um, and then I can turn that shape on and off with the uh, controls right here. So here's the flattened version. And if you go into your UV map over here, you can see that it, it's identical. It's using the map over here to create the same shape in 3D space. So I have this flattened version of it. Now that I have this flattened version, it's a lot easier to put stuff on the surface of it because it's flat. So, for example, uh, I'm going to add like a, let's make a chain. All right. Um, let's see. What would a chain look like? I guess stretch this out here like that and then duplicate it like that and rotate it like that. It's a pretty good chain, I guess. Do this again and make a bunch of links. And let's scale it down so it fits the arm. Put it right on the surface here. Not like that. And I'm just going to add a bunch more just for fun. Alright, looks okay. So now I can switch back and forth between my original shape and my flattened shape. I'm going to bind these to the surface with this other tool, the surface follow tool. Uh, just you select this one first and then the object you're going to bind it to and whatever your active object is everything else that's selected will be bound to the active object surface 
So bind to surface. And now I'm going to set it to continuous update by turning on the scene update. And that's going to run continuously in the background. And now when I change this shape, the chain now follows that surface and deforms with it. And now that it's deformed correctly, I can actually turn this off because it can cause some lag if you leave it running continuously. And now I don't really need this object anymore because I just used it to mold the chain around the arm. And now I've got my chains all wrapped nicely, perfectly around this arm. So that's the gist of what the tool does and super easy to use. Um, and now let's just go over what all of the different features are. All right, let's look at the features of the surface follow add-on. So I already showed you what bind to surface does, but let me explain it a little better. So if you've got this object and say you want this to be your surface and you want other objects to follow this surface, um, so let's add like an icosphere and let's add a few more. And let's actually make another object. So let's add like cylinder. the cylinder up so that it can actually bend with the shape and oh we'll just add I'll add a monkey there all right so now if I select multiple objects and then whatever I have selected last it's going to treat as the surface all these other objects are going to be bound to this surface when I click on bind the surface. So now I've just created a whole bunch of data. So if I go into here and do something to this, I have scene update running. It's going to update immediately. If I turn that off, that doesn't do anything, but I can hit update once. Uh, this button right here. And it will just update whatever the latest changes I made were. If I have it like animated, running continuously or something, so like let's say let's say I made this uh, cloth object and I've got my modeling cloth add-on here installed, so I'll just use that. And um, so now when I turn this into cloth and turn some gravity on you know, it's going to fall like cloth, behave like cloth. Now it's not going to affect these objects because I don't have it set to run continu continuously, but if I turn on the um, scene update and then I run my cloth simulation, sorry to make everybody dizzy, well now it's going to move all those objects with the cloth. So it's running continuously. And you notice it gives some weird distortions and it has to do with how the surface is deforming and how these relationships are generated. But one thing that you can do that greatly improves that is just to use the corrective smooth uh, modifier. So depending on how you set that up it will actually improve the, the look, depending on what you're going for. So that's the gist of the Surface Follow add-on. So let's look at the um, UV tools. So for example, if I create a cube and I select this cube and I do create UV shape well the UV shape isn't going to work very well because it's trying to take 
this two-dimensional information and apply it to vertices that are connected. So it's going to do some weird stuff. It's going to flatten it out. The, the shape, what it actually looks like, it's got this, you know, kind of overlap and it doesn't work very well. So if you do something like, let's, let's manually unwrap this. So I'm going to I need to go into face edit mode here. Um, I'm going to unwrap this face and then I'm going to unwrap the other faces and now my UV map looks more like that and now if I recreate this it's still going to look weird you know because it's got this these overlaps and doesn't really know what to do with this being separate from this in the UV map, but join to it in the 3D space. So one of the things you can do is you can do auto split geometry. And what that will do is it will basically put cuts into the geometry wherever there's cuts in the UV map. So now if I redo this after I hit auto split geometry, it's going to divide it up a lot more nicely into these two shapes like that. So that's what that does. And then for use active map, if you set it to use active map, if you've done something like, we'll go ahead and just create a new object and look at what that does. So if I want to unwrap this section and then unwrap this section and put it over here and put this one over here or something like that. If I use active map, then rather than generating a new map, because what it does by default is generate a new map, it will use the map that I've created. So when I do create UV shape now and I turn it on, of course it's not going to work right because this is all divided up over here different. So let's do auto split geometry and do it again. And now it's going to be more like what I created over here. Now, I've, I've also got this Rescale Islands button, and what that does is it basically respects the scale in 3D space and ignores the scale in UV space. So these are gigantic over here and tiny here, but since I turned on Rescale Islands, it's going to rescale these things so that it's a lot closer to what it was in the 3D view. And that may make it easier, it may actually confuse things, so we have the option to turn that off. So if we turn off Rescale Islands and create the UV shape, then it's going to look a lot more like it does in the UV editor as far as the size. So hopefully that makes sense. So that's the gist of it. And there are a couple of things that I need to do, I need to fix. Um, and hopefully I'll have a chance to, to do that. So if you guys want to support me, you can purchase these add-ons. I have them available on Gumroad if you want to purchase them. Um, they are on the Blender market, but I much prefer you purchase, purchase them off of Gumroad. The add-ons are the same if you download the free version versus if you pay for the version and, and get the download from Blender Market or from Gumroad. They're identical. And that's just because I, I know that people can't really afford to pay for stuff like this when they're experimenting. Um, but I know people sometimes just want to make a one-time donation, and sometimes you just feel right about buying the add-on versus downloading it free. What would be best is if you can support me on Patreon, because the regular monthly support on Patreon will gradually allow me to move away from other projects and devote my time completely to making these cool add-ons for free, um, and basically just from generous people. And I know that's the way that Blender works, and I've made my living off of Blender. So I love that model, and I love to give free stuff to everybody, and I really appreciate it when people contribute. So uh, happy blending. I hope you guys get some great use out of these add-ons, and give me lots of feedback. Thanks.